Hey guys, uh, John with the Indian Outdoorsman. Uh, you know, um, the season's over, so we take advantage of times like this. And you know, it's about 47 degrees today. Steady overcast, sunshine, overcast, sunshine. It's a good way to spot sheds from from the deep, especially during the overcast time. But uh, you know, when you're out there in the woods this time of year, it'll give you some of the best intel that you can possibly have. You know, you'll find ridge lines like this, which is littered with rubs and scrapes and I mean, everything you can think of, and, and you find new trails, you know, you, you see where the deer have been going, but uh, you really you really don't know, you know, until you until you get down there and really, and really look. But uh, I just wanted to show you this rub. This rub on this old cedar, I mean, I don't know how big around this tree is, but it's huge. It may be one of the biggest rubs I've ever seen in my life. Now, matter of fact, I know it is, but it, it might be one of the biggest rubs I've ever seen in any state that I've ever hunted in. So uh, and this is in my pretty much my backyard, but um, this is actually um, on a property that I don't have permission to hunt, but I have permission to shed hunt, permission to mushroom hunt, and, and things of that nature. Matter of fact, nobody has permission to hunt this spot. So I like to come here and just look. It's it's beautiful country, and I definitely like to look for sheds. Um, I definitely like to glass the bucks from my property that are coming in and out of this spot, as you can tell. So I uh, just wanted to show you that, guys. We'll, we'll take you along for the ride. Um, Chase was able uh, to find a, a coyote kill up there on the uh, old bean field, but uh, hopefully we find some sheds. A lot of them are still holding, but uh, we're going to walk this old boy a few more miles and, and uh, see what we get. So it's amazing. Ready? Hunt him up. Hunt him up. Get the sheds. Come down to the river. Come and left yourself in. Make good on a promise, never heard again. If you don't stand loaded, you're broken down. Bring all of your trouble, go lay them down. Okay, so what we'd like to do um, when we're shed hunting, one of the uh, tactics that we have right now, we're on top of a huge ridge. There's a creek bottom, creek flat down there. Ridge on this side, ridge on that side, ridge over there. This is like a huge funnel that goes up to an ag field. And this ridge at the top right here, it's not 15 yards wide. So they have a lot of these trails that they, they can come up on either ridge. Several trails can come up on either ridge. We can check those. We'd like to check the tops. You know, as you know, mo most uh, bucks, most does, you know, especially the bucks, they're gonna bed at the top of these ridges so they can see everything and they're gonna bed with their nose pointed down. So if anything comes from behind them, boom, they have a quick exit. They're running down that hill like it ain't nothing. So uh, we like to check these these ridge trails. We like to check the flats. You can see where they bed, play this day. But uh, you know, we check the grass areas, let the dog really work in the grass areas. Uh, sometimes when they drop them, you're not gonna find them notice that thicker, taller grass. But uh, um, what else do we do? Um, um, on these ridges, when they like to, to bed down on these ridges, I found a pair of shed before where the buck is just bedded down and he does one of these numbers and he shakes his head and boom, boom, both antlers fall off or boom, one antler falls off. So it's a good strategy to uh, to check out their beds, you know, check out where you know that they bed. It's the only time of year I'd even consider doing that. Um, when we get up on top of this ag field here, um, I'll use the Nikon and I'll glass that field, glass it and glass it and see if anything sticks out to me. now. Um, it's best to do that when there's overcast and the clouds have since pushed off and it's, it's gotten pretty sunny out so optimally it'd be more um, cloudy out be a little bit better visibility for those sheds um, for my liking but you know um, in the comments you know in the video um, drop us a line let us know how you shed huh if you have any other tactics that you like to use um, I know I'm always trying to learn more you know I learned shed hunting by just taking the dog you know he's you know, his lab, you know, it's a golden retriever, retriever breed, whatever, they just have a natural instinct for it. So, you know, I take him, I watch YouTube videos like maybe the one you're watching now and, and uh, try to implement those strategies. And if you have anything that you'd like to add, go ahead and drop us a line. Let us know uh, what you think, what you try, what you recommend. Um, another thing that I like to do um, is I'll bring a shed with me, even if it's just a little baby shed. That way, that I found in years past or whatever, that way, if the dog's out working and he doesn't find a shed, you know, let him walk by and then drop a shed down and then let him work back to it. And um, once he finds it, you know, give him a huge reward. Uh, just praise him, 
if you have a little treat, throw him a treat. You know, I like to get, praise him, give him some water, and uh, you know, gets him pumped up and makes him feel like he did something, and uh, it helps him the next time. You know, keeps that keeps that drive going. You know, so he found something. He's he's happy that you're happy. So that's a good tip um, that I've learned along the way. Also, so uh, we're gonna keep walking. We've got a probably got two hours in now. We're gonna have at least two hour walk back. So uh, uh, we're gonna keep after it and.